What is going on everyone? Back at it with the RM250 today. So stoked to be bringing you another video, making some more progress on this bike. It is coming along really good, but today's is gonna be a banger. We're gonna be working on the rear shock here, giving it a full makeover. She's looking a little crusty. So let's get to it. You'll wanna stick around for this one. Now this shock probably hasn't been a part in a number of years. It'll be interesting to see what it looks like inside. It does have some oil seepage from the seal. It's pretty dirty overall. But other than that, it looks to be in pretty solid shape. But I promise you, when we are done massaging this thing, it'll look nothing like it does right now. So first up, we will need to remove the shock spring. All right, let's get this thing in the vise. Make sure when you're clamping it down, you use a pair of soft jaws or something soft to protect it. And don't mind the fireworks here. It was too dry out here to light these off this year, so we just got them sitting around we had a good old popcorn snowball moody blue make america great again but we'll have to wait till we get some rain to light these off maybe we'll do something cool with them shoot me some ideas to loosen up the shock spring nut we're just gonna give it a little tap with a hammer should break free and just spin this thing all the way up it's got a bunch of freaking dirt in it she might need a little lube that's better then just grab the shock spring by hand and spin it all the way up as well. Now for the spring retainer, we just need to knock these two pieces apart. And then slide down the shock bumper. Then you can work the retainer over the shaft. And the spring will just slide, careful there, right off. Now is a good time to clean up the shock. With the spring off, it's a lot easier to get in here and detail everything before we tear it apart. She is not looking too bad after a little scrubbing. Now a good way to test if your shock is in need of a rebuild, obviously have the spring off and you wanna compress it by hand. And as you're compressing it, it needs to be just smooth and consistent. If it compresses and then stops, and if it's inconsistent, that could be a sign of air trapped in that oil. If it is uh, rebounding really quick, so say you compress it, and it just rebounds like a pogo stick, that means your nitrogen is low or there is not enough pressure in the bladder there. So this shock seemed to work just fine, but we are getting some oil coming out of the seal there. So definitely gonna wanna pull this one apart and throw a new seal head in there. Also, one thing before you split apart your shock or take your spring off, if you have your preload or your uh, sag set, you wanna measure the length of the spring before you loosen up these nuts. That'll save you some time in the future when you go to uh, set your sag again. Also a good idea to take some pictures before you start disassembly, just so you can see how everything is put together. First things first, we'll wanna release the nitrogen out of the bladder. I prefer just to remove the whole core out of this, that way you know all that nitrogen is out of there. And as you're working the shock out of the body, it just helps to have this completely empty. Next, we're gonna wanna pop off the end cap. There's a hole on either side here. You just tap on it with a little punch and it'll come loose. Try to work this thing off evenly. Now, if your oil seal is leaking like this one is, you're gonna wanna clean up inside of here. It's pretty nasty in here. I like to tape this cap up and out of the way. You can clean all this up with a screwdriver and rag or compressed air works pretty good too. Then you'll wanna compress the seal head, just get your fingers in there, put some weight on it, and she should slide right in. So the seal head doesn't wanna stay down, we'll have to hold it down with a punch here and grab a little pick, get behind the circlip, pop it out of the groove. This might be a three-handed operation because the seal's being a little difficult. Well actually, looks like I got a good grip on the clip here and then just pop it right up. Just wiggle it on out of there. You work it over the shaft, just make sure you extend it. That way you don't scratch the shaft there. And then let up pressure on that seal head. Make sure all that dirt is out of there. Now before you remove the shock shaft out of the body, you wanna have a drain pan handy. Could get a little messy here. Slowly start working this thing out. 
If it's being stubborn, you can just grab the dust seal, be replacing this anyways, and just give the little wiggle. All right, we are crowning a little bit, a little head popping out, just wiggle it on out, and that's it. Pop the shock body out of the vise, and empty the oil into the pan. Well, doesn't look too bad, actually. Now we can get to work on the bladder cap. Just push it in. Might need a tap on it. And grab that same pick we were using earlier. To work out this circlip. Helps to have a little flat blade to work it up. Sometimes these bladder caps can be really stuck in there, especially if the shock hasn't been apart in a while. I like to put a rag around some pliers, grab hold of it. Now we're free to empty the rest of the oil out of the body. And since we're gonna be stripping this body all the way down, we'll wanna remove the nuts and the compression adjuster. Looks like the compression adjuster uses a 24 millimeter socket. Loosen that thing up. And it simply just comes on out. So the compression adjuster came apart when I pulled it out of the body. If this happens to you, don't worry. It does happen from time to time. Just over time, those things get stuck in there. But while we have it apart, I thought I'd show you how these things work. So this adjuster is basically a valve controlling the oil flow from the main part of the body through to the reservoir. And when you make adjustments here with the high speed or the low speed, that creates resistance for the oil to flow from here to here. So when the valves together, the oil flows through these holes here. And that is what controls the compression of the shock. So that's just the, uh, the basics of it, but Pretty cool to see these things apart. Now the last thing we'll need to do with the shock body is remove these Allen head screws as well as the upper shock bearing. Now if you have a needle bearing that's worn, you'll notice the needles start falling apart. A fresh bearing or a tight bearing, all those will stay together. So we're just going to dump all these needles in the garbage and press out that bearing in the vise. So to press out this bearing, you'll want to find a socket that fits pretty close to the bore on the shock body. A little heat always helps. And then get a socket that fits over the entire bearing. And if it comes to a stop, you definitely wanna check it out, make sure it's not binding up on anything. Looks like that socket is hitting the bearing. And then just tighten it on through. All right, now the shock body is completely bare. We're ready to sandblast this thing and give it some coatings, but I'm gonna work on the shock shaft for a bit now. Now it appears the shock has already been apart. Now in order to remove the piston and shim stack, usually you have to grind off the nut as well as the top of the shaft. Now as you can see, that has already been ground down, but it looks like they kept it in pretty good shape. The thing you wanna watch out for on the shaft is not to damage the actual hole. That'll affect the rebound from working properly, but looks like we can just spin that nut right off and we'll be good to go. So chances are they used a red Loctite on the nut. We want to heat that up to break that loose. Wish I could have showed you guys how to grind that lip off in order to get the nut off, but basically you just grind it down until the lip is completely gone. When you're grinding, you'll wanna protect all of the shim stack and piston. Now when you're pulling the piston and shim stack off, you wanna be really careful not to get things out of order. So you can either use a screwdriver to keep everything in order, or I like to use a zip tie. Slide everything up and off. It actually looks like there's some burrs left over on that shaft. I want to smooth that out. You can see there's a little bit of that thread hanging on. That's preventing the piston from sliding off. We can just grab a file and smooth that right out. It's 
give this another shot. Looks like the piston's still getting hung up on there. Let's do some more filing. Oh yeah, that's much better. So now with the shim stack and piston on the zip tie, you can just tighten down the zip tie and these things aren't going anywhere. Now at this point, we can just slide off the seal head. It helps to take some pictures or a video as you're doing this so that way you know the order. So we got the seal head, the bottom cap for the body, shock bumper, and the collar on the bottom. Now I'm really tempted to pull the clevis off the shaft and do some coatings on it, but it is quite a bit of work to pull these off. I'm not really going balls of the walls on this bike, so I'm just gonna leave the clevis bare and I'll just pull the adjuster off and regrease all that. So I was taking a look at this rebound adjuster and honestly, I just don't see the way that it pops off of there. Usually on Showa shocks, they have a little set screw that holds it in place but this one doesn't have anything, nowhere. So if you guys know of a way of getting these out, just let me know. Now with the shock completely disassembled, we're gonna clean some things up and get them ready for coatings. So I'm gonna do Cerakote on the shock body, as well as the spring retainer nuts and the bottom collar. This is steel, so it's kind of rusting and just needs to be coated again and I am going to powder coat the shock spring. And once you have a shock completely apart, you'll see there's really not a whole lot going on here. Common wear items we are looking for here, shock bladder, those things wear out over time, as well as the oil and dust seals, and the shock bumper. And that is pretty much the extent of the wear items, some of the circlips as well, maybe some O-rings, but overall the shock looked like it was in pretty good shape. Now to get these parts ready for a Cerakote, I'm gonna clean them up, make sure all the oil is off of them, peel the sticker, and do some sanding just to remove some of these sharp edges, as well as these shock bodies always come with like this rough, almost grinded look on the uh, reservoir. I'm gonna sand that smooth. While I'm at it, I'm just gonna sand down some of these casting lines like usual add my own little touch to it and while you have the shot completely apart you want to check inside the bore for any scrapes or nicks anything that would hinder the piston from operating smoothly you'll want to clean up Always amazes me what a few minutes at the buffing machine will do. This thing just looks really clean now. All those lines are smoothed out. So one thing I discovered recently with these flap wheels is it helps a lot to use a lubricant such as WD-40 or this Maxima MPPL. It actually cuts quicker and sands a lot smoother. So if you guys are using abrasive products or these flap wheels in particular, Give this stuff a try. And speaking of flap wheels, I have a pretty sweet deal for all of you wanting to step up your buffing game. Let me take you over to the uh, shelving over here. So if you guys are not aware, I do sell a lot of abrasive products through my store, Prime. And recently we got a big shipment in and every time we go through all of the products when they come in, some of them don't quite meet the standard. I don't like to sell anything unless it is just absolutely perfect. So. I have a bunch of wheels that I'd like to give away. So we've got a few stacks of wheels here that aren't quite up to snuff. When we go through these, sometimes we'll notice a little wobble or a little defect, just something minor. It's mostly cosmetic. All of these still work just like normal. Doesn't affect them at all. But like I said, I don't really like to sell things unless they are perfect. So I am gonna be doing a giveaway with all of these wheels here. Wheels in the bin, got some smaller wheels for die grinders. So if you wanna grab one of these wheels, head over to the website, primemx.com. And on the homepage, you're gonna to wanna to click on free items. 
scroll down until you see the flap wheel right here. You want to select the shaft size of your buffing machine as well as the grit that you want and add it to the cart and just make sure you have $25 worth of product in the cart and you'll get this wheel for free. I also have a lot of the smaller wheels I was showing you earlier as well as the cleaning wheels. So lots of great stuff up for grabs. So if you want to check out this little sale I got going on, I will have the website linked down below. But let's get back to work on this shock and uh, see what we can do. Now I've been working on smoothing out this spring nut. It was pretty jacked up from people using a screwdriver on it. I know these things are probably like five bucks to replace, but I don't know, I just like restoring parts that can have another use in them. But I'm gonna grab a file and just square up all these notches here. This preload ring really didn't turn out too bad. Kind of has a redneck works look to it. Next thing we gotta do is drop all this stuff in the sandblaster. Now, whenever I'm doing coatings on shock bodies, I like to mask off the bore here inside, just so that way the sandblasting doesn't roughen that up and cause any performance issues. So the parts are all blasted and ready for Cerakote. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Cerakote. But it's basically a super thin ceramic coating that you bake on and it holds up remarkably well. So the general process, and I've actually showed this quite a few times on the channel here, but I'll just quickly walk you guys through it. Sandblast the parts with 100 grit aluminum oxide media and then drop them in acetone for 30 minutes to soak. Drop them in the oven, bake them for an hour. That just basically burns off all the contaminants. Once they're cool, you spray them out pop them back in the oven for another hour to bake on the coating. And once they're cool, you can pretty much just go ahead and use them. So Cerakote comes in two parts. You have the part A, which is the color here. We're gonna be going with tungsten on these parts here. Then you have the part B, the catalyst. You mix these at a 12 to one ratio. That's the uh, ratio that I use. And then you spray them out of a mini HVLP gun. So pretty simple stuff. Let's get to it. While that Cerakote is drying, I am going to clean up the rest of the shock parts here. I'm actually gonna go just raw aluminum on these parts. I'm gonna bring them over to the bench grinder and brush them up. I think I might polish up the shaft while I'm at it. Shaft action can't hurt. Sounded pretty gay. So I'll just be using a number three polishing wheel here. This is going to smooth out just some of those finer scratches here on the chrome. Use a blue compound with that.
We're doing brand new. So obviously, less scratches here is gonna lead to less friction. But I always kind of wonder, you know how when you have something polished, you sometimes it has like stiction to it when you have oil. I wanna do a little test and see if that's the case with this thing. I'm gonna put a seal on here, see how much drag it has compared to something that isn't polished out like that. Just gonna drop the old seal head on here. It seems like it's pretty smooth. It obviously has some stiction there because those seals need to be pretty tight. However, let's wipe it down. This is just purely gonna be based on feeling. I'm not gonna start trying to measure the stiction here. So I've got a pretty fine grade scotch bright pad here. I'm just gonna lightly give it a little scuff. See if that makes a difference. So the thinking here is if it's a little scuffed, that oil will sit in those little scratches and just won't uh, beat off of there. But honestly, I don't really feel a difference here. Feels exactly the same scuffed up or fully polished. So honestly, I don't think it really matters a whole lot. I think our dinner's done. stuff is looking pretty prime. Hard to beat that Cerakote and brushed aluminum combo. So I've been spraying the Cerakote for a couple years now, probably two years, maybe a little bit more. And this is the best it's ever turned out. There's always ways to improve upon it, but it's just been clicking really good lately. So pretty pumped on how this stuff is looking. So that is all we have time for today. I'm gonna do a pretty quick turnaround on the shock. So tomorrow you will see a video coming out of it being assembled back together. We're actually gonna be doing some powder coating on the spring as well. Got a cool color picked up for that. So excited to see how this thing comes together. But for you guys that are new to the channel or have not yet seen the RM we're building, here it is back in the corner. You can see some of the colors we're going with. A lot of charcoal, some bright yellow anodizing. Really happy with how this thing is turning out. And we're actually doing a giveaway on it when it's all finished up. So if you wanna sign up for that, just hit the link down below in the description. But that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow in the shock build video. Take care.